हेलो टीम वेलकम टू माय सेशन ऑन कॉफी विद प्रब एंड टुडे वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट सम कॉफी शॉट्स ऑफ डोमेन टू थैंक्स फॉर द अमेजिंग रिस्पांस यू हैव शेयर्ड ऑन माय प्रीवियस डोमेन्स एंड दैट मोटिवेट मी टू मेक अनदर वीडियो ऑन सी डोमेन टू देर वॉज नो मच वीडियोज ऑन डोमेन टू आई थॉट लेट मी पुट अफर्ट्स एंड मेक अ वीडियो ऑन डोमेन टू सो इफ यू न्यू टू द चैनल डू सब्सक्राइब टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल एंड क्लिक ऑन द बेल आइकन टू मेक श्योर यू शुड नॉट मिस माई फ्यूचर वीडियोज ऑन अ सिमिलर टॉपिक so without wasting a time let's start with the first part thank you okay uh, so first coffee shot before we going to discuss about this coffee shot you know you should you, you should be mentally prepared you will get a series of you know three four line questions and all that so i thought i will make a new videos of paragraph based questions which basically help you to improve your reading habits okay so if you go by the question the question says that aspirants multinational corporation has uh, recently de- uh, discovered a data breach involving the personal data of a several thousand eu citizens The breach was discovered on Monday 9 a.m. and the company has initiated its incident response plan. The company data protection officer is assessing the situation to determine the necessary steps to comply with the GDPR. So according to the GDPR within what time frame must company XYZ report the data breach to the appropriate supervisory authority so first thing you need to remember whenever the question talk about data breach reporting to whom we need to do we need to do to supervisory authority and what factor should be considered when assessing whether breach poses a risk to the rights and freedom so option a the company has a one week to report a breach considering only the number of affected individual and the sensitive breach data makes sense till this part makes sense but wait for the one week it's a concern option b is company must report the breach within a 48 hours consider the nature scope nature scope context and purpose of processing as well as the risk of varying the likelihood severity of the rights and freedom of natural person makes sense but 48 hours is not necessary option c the company has no specific time frame which is itself is a concern so definitely uh, but must consider the potential financial impact but not necessary every breach is mapped with a financial impact in this case there is a possibility of legal regulatory so definitely c and a is eliminated so we left with b and d say the company must report the breach within a 72 hours considering the nature scope context and purpose of processing as well as risk of varying the likelihood and severity of the rights and freedom of a personal natural person so the d option look clear because according to the gdpr data breach reporting need to be done in 72 hours okay that's why the answer is d for delta okay so let's move to the next coffee shot thank you okay aspirin technology is expanding its operations and considering the storing and processing personal information of a customer in a different countries okay the company compliance officer is reviewing the various data protection law to ensure compliance to which country does the personal information and electronic act pipda is apply and what are the key principles that aspirants need to adhere to so question specifically talking about pipda option a united states no definitely no united states concerned accountability limited collection safeguard no pipda is not applicable in us in pipda in us we have a california consumer privacy act which is california specific and for the health care they have a hipaa and for the financial they have a glba definitely pipda is not applicable in the us option b canada makes sense and it has a principle called accountability identifying purpose consent limited collection limited use accuracy safeguard openness definitely i can completely go with the b but let me see c option australia but australia has their own data privacy principle which include your openness access corrections data quality and d is uk uk has their own but question specifically talking about pipda so always remember pipda is something which is applicable for the canadian resident and citizen that's why in this case answer is b for beta let's move to the next coffee shot thank you okay very good question which of the following is the primary objective of data classification within the organization i repeat again which of the following is the primary objective of data classification within the organization option a to facilitate the interoperability and ensure data is only stored on cloud platform but why 
classification only deal with the cloud platform so a removed option b to assign the monetary value to the data and determine the cost of storing and processing data but one thing is missing here is protection of data option c determining the appropriate handling and allocate necessary security to manage the data makes sense see we classify the data so that asset receive the appropriate level of protection so example like in this case also okay so we have a cssp with 600 page book it is not possible for you to read word by word it is not possible for you to remember word by word so what happen is when you collect the feedbacks and all that you got to know these topics are important and with that topics you basically prepare and go for the exam so you are classify those topics are important right same like in the organization we have a multiple assets now it is difficult for me to give same level of attention to all the assets that is why first we identify the value of asset okay value is also we have a two way to analyze qualitative and quantitative qualitative is basically deal with the reputations and all that and quantitative deal with the monetary value so here we analyze the value of data and according to that we decide the level of protection on the data so by this we get a assurance also the cost of protection is not exceeding the cost of value so that is why i see b is makes sense but c is it determine the appropriate handling and allocate the necessary security to manage data which makes sense and d say that to enable the data deduplication and optimize the organization data so it does not make sense the biggest reason of classifying the data is c so by classifying the data the data will receive the appropriate level of protection that's why the answer is c for charlie okay let's move to the next coffee shot thank you okay so next question which of the following data security processing technique is recommend under the gdpr to reduce the risk to the data subject and helps the data controller in meeting their data protection obligation by transforming the personal data in such a way resulting data cannot be attributed to a specific data subject without the use of additional information okay it's a very good question see first of all try to understand gdpr is basically applicable for the eu resident the one who reside in eu gdpr is applicable there resident is basically include the citizen plus pr holders plus people who visit so if you take example here we have a company in eu okay we have a company in eu and that company is basically uh uh that company is basically collecting a data doing a business in eu so according to that they need to apply for gdpr now in gdpr we basically have a two important roles one is called as a data controller and one is called as a data processor so example like you are a customer you went to the bank bank is basically using a cloud services with third party so in this case bank is a data controller who collect the data and cloud is basically data processor so i need in your comment box in this case if any security breach happen who is answerable to the customer so answer is basically bank so data controller is ultimately responsible and accountable for data protection okay before we discuss the answers and all that i want to give a clarification on this area that is why i discuss this now question say that how to protect the data the first technique is called as a tokenization see tokenization is used in the payment card industry where what happen is the the value or whatever the sensitive data we have it is replaced with a token value and that token value is sent over the network so today this is used in a payment card transaction so whenever you swipe your card enter your card details and all that instead of sending a same credit card information over the network because anyone can able to intercept that easily agree so we want to protect that i don't want any sensitive information to be sent over the network but i want to perform the transaction also because until the server doesn't receive the authentication value it will not get access so what happen is when you swipe your card it generate a value instead of sending a token number it send this value over the network to the destination so if someone intercept that value from there they cannot find anything so that is called as a tokenization same like when you go to the malls and all that you swipe your card once and you get a one coupon or one token card and that token card you use in every food shelf restaurant is it clear so you will not swipe your card same like you know when you go for valet parking you give your car key against that they give you one number and that is a token number you carry throughout the party even it is misplaced no one can able to identify that okay this is belong to which car key so tokenization used in a payment card industry okay not in a data privacy so a removed 
encryption is basically a state in which we convert the data into a different text but if you want to process you cannot process default encrypted data in gdpr we need to process the data so we have a two more techniques which is used in a data and use stage so one is called pseudonymization where the original data is processed and resulting data cannot be attributed to a specific data subject without use of additional information and second is called as anonymization where the original data is processed in a way that it can never be used to identify the individual so real answer right answer is basically gdpr sorry the right answer is basically c pseudonymization now what is pseudonymization so pseudonymization is what happen is suppose this is basically name is ramesh okay cci network security and staying in germany okay so is this is basically value replaced with 1 cci network security and germany so from this particular data no one can able to identify this data is belong to whom because this is the value which is anonymized ha huh. the same value i have to use in a back to the database to retrieve the information about ramesh so we need to use the same value to reprocess the data so example like you went to the hospital So in the hospital, what happens is they will maintain the patient ID record number instead of they maintaining a patient name. They maintain the patient ID record number. So from the record number, they basically trace back. So by this way, they maintain the privacy also and the business also. So that is why in GDPR we use anonymization, but pseudonymization. But anonymization is basically completely replacing the value. You cannot retrieve back. But at least in a pseudonymization, we can retrieve the value because we have to retrieve the value for the processing of a data. Okay, so that's why in this case answer is C for Charlie. Okay, let's move to the next coffee shot. Okay, which of the following is a least effective method of data deletion and may allow data to be recovered with the special software? Media sanitization is a most important topic in CISSP team. Okay, so you should be mentally prepared for this topic. So it's a least effective method. of a data deletion but may allow the data to be recovered with a special software so first is called clearing now in clearing what happen is the data got overwrite so example like this is my data okay just give me a second this is basically my data okay and these are basically called as a pointers so what happen is the data is basically stored in a form of pointers So when I basically overwrite this data, it is difficult to retrieve the data. So clearing is a technique in which we add some values to the existing pointers by which we cannot able to retrieve the data. Okay, so that is basically first technique when we need to reuse the media uh, for the new process and we need to delete the data. See, first process simply you shift plus delete, then you format. But still, if you want to delete in a more secure manner, you will use a logical way of deleting a data, which is called clearing. in which we overwrite the pointers which is used to retrieve the data second is basically called as a purging in purging what happen we use a degaussing technique so we have a hard uh, we have a degausser machine degausser machine okay we called as a degausser machine and with the help of degausser we place the hard disk in a degausser and with the help of magnetic field we remove the the pointers from the disk so that is called as a physical technique which is called as a purging purging is used a degaussing technique destroying is physically destroyed furnishing there is nothing called furnishing in this case the question say least effective that's why the answer is answer is called as a clearing you know why clearing is basically the answer because in a clearing we overwrite but with the help of advanced special software we can still recover the data because data still there in the disk before we move to the next question i want to discuss this diagram with you guys because this is testable from the perspective so this is not there in any book but if you able to understand this you ready for any kind of a questions now when we talking about any document okay so when you talking about any any document so example like um if i'm talking about if i'm doing a clearing okay because we have to see if the data category low we need to see does it leaving the organization control no then simply clear i will reuse security categorization low does it leaving the uh, data yes then we basically purge because in that case you cannot able to recover the data by any way because you degauss the data now the third technique is basically like you know the data category is basically we have suppose security categorization is moderate are we going to reuse the media no then we destroy does it leaving the organization control no then we clear so we can reuse if yes we will purge 
okay but in the case of high category data the only solution we basically have is destroy the data you can see are we going to reuse the media no we destroy yes does it leaving the organization control yes then we simply destroy so if you understand this particular diagram you can able to handle any kind of a question but in the case of ssd the only solution what we have is physical destruction of the disk okay let's move to the next question okay Ten -ten -ten. which of the following statement accurately describe how crypto shedding can be implemented as a data synthesis method in a aspirants cloud based environment to securely delete customer data now crypto shedding is a technique when you store data in the cloud you want to delete the data directly from the cloud so we use a crypto shedding only it is also called as a crypto eraser option a crypto shedding is a cloud environment involve overwriting customer data with the cryptography algorithm ensure data is unrecoverable which is not true in cloud based setting crypto shedding refer to the process of deleting a cryptography key and used to encrypt customer data and then rendering the encrypted data uh, irretrievable and ensure secure data deletion makes sense option c crypto shedding in a cloud involved physically destroying the hardware you don't have a physical access body and cryptography key and making suitable method of hardware based storage and solution and option d is in a cloud environment crypto shedding is a practice of using a cryptography protocol to transfer the data to secure handling facility ensure data is unrecoverable which is true not true so d removed and c removed and a removed the only option is basically left is b for beta so in crypto shedding what happen is first we upload the data then we encrypt the data and directly delete the encrypted state of the data from the cloud and then we delete the key which is stored offline why because tomorrow in the worst case if cloud employer retrieve my data it is in an encrypted state from the encrypted state they cannot able to retrieve the data understood that's why the answer is b for beta let's move to the next question thank you so next question which of the following statement accurately describe and to and encryption option a the data are encrypted in the middle of the communication channel option b routing information encrypted along with the data option c data remain encrypted until they are decrypted at the remote end and option d is and to and encryption generally performed by external entity before we basically discuss this question in detail let me explain you first these two type of encryption so first is basically called as a and to and encryption and second is called as a link encryption and to an encryption is happening on the application layer which is done by the user and link encryption is happening on the layer 2 which is done by the isp so in this scenario we have a system a and we have a system b okay so we have a system a and we have a system b now in this case we have a internet here okay so we have a router here we have a router here and we have a router so the first scenario is end to end so in the end to end what happen is we have a data and we have a header so in this case it only encrypt the data so it goes to the internet and it remain encrypted throughout the journey and it will be decrypted by only b that is called as a end to end but in the case of link encryption what happen is when data encrypted reach this router this router receive the encrypted data they add their own routing header and encrypt again the entire data this time and then it move to next router this router will decrypt read the routing header encrypt again forward to this router this router decrypt read the routing information and pass the information to the b so in the link encryption data encrypt and decrypt in every end but not entire data and that impact the performance with the link encryption with and to encryption the data encrypt at this point and decrypt only in this point so if attacker intercept here he need to break only one layer but if attacker intercept here he need to break two layer one is basically link one and one is called and to end that is why from the exam point of view you need to remember link encryption is basically more secure so in this case answer is c because data remain encrypted at the remote end because this is talking about and to and encryption if the question talking about link encryption then answer is basically b for beta okay so let's move to the next question thank you okay it's a very good question 
which type of media sanitation process where the removal of sensitive from system or storage device with the intent data cannot be reconstructed by any known technique clearing is happen with the help of technique we delete destroy you physically destroying the disk but the question is not talking about destruction of the disk they say removal of data option d crypto sharing is only applicable in the cloud so only option left is b purging because in a purging we use degaussing technique by which physically we destroy the data from the disk and later you cannot able to recover the data by any technique at least in a clearing we can use an advanced technique to retrieve the data because data state is still there in the disk but in the purging we physically remove the data from the disk so this is all from my side do let me know how do you find this video and do share your feedback which help me to make more videos on such kind of a topics thank you team and thank you gladiators for watching my video and do share your network spread love thank you so much good day bye